Hello, welcome to Reality TV. I'm Raymond Bakari. Today I'm joined by Rhode Island General Treasurer Seth Magaziner, who's running for Congress in Rhode Island's 2nd Congressional District. Treasurer Magaziner, how are you today? I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. It's good to be with you. It's great to have you on. You're running for Rhode Island's 2nd Congressional District, seeking the Democratic nomination in quite a bit of a crowded primary. Um, this is just a general question. Why do you want to be the district's next congressperson? Well, I'm running for Congress because I want to advance an agenda that helps uh, open up pathways to the American dream for uh, families in Rhode Island. Uh, we need to help uh, Rhode Islanders who are in the middle class and are working their way into the middle class and make it easier for people to achieve real financial security. When I talk to uh, people from Rhode Island all across the state, uh, people are worried. They're worried about the rising cost of living. They're worried uh, about their kids' education. They're worried about the future of our democracy. And we need leaders now more than ever who can go to Washington, cut through the nonsense and, and get things done and deliver real results uh, for Rhode Island families. My, um, my family's story begins with my grandparents. We, uh, my grandparents all grew up uh, poor during the Great Depression. They were all children of immigrants. My grandfather, Bob, uh, grew up to a family of Irish immigrants in Worcester, Massachusetts. My grandfather, Louis, a family of Jewish immigrants in New York. They didn't have a lot, but when they got home from the war, they were able to get jobs. My grandfather, Bob in Worcester was a steel worker and Lewis in New York was a bookkeeper. And with those jobs, this is the important thing, they were able to buy houses. They were able to put all their kids through college. They were able to earn a ticket to the middle class. Uh, those kids, my parents uh, started a business and they were successful and created a great life for me and my siblings. And Stories like this used to be very common in America, these stories of families, you know, working hard and doing the right thing and building a pathway to the middle class and building a better life for their kids than they had for themselves. And um, unfortunately, uh, that path to the middle class has become much harder uh, in recent years. Uh, people are working harder and harder, having a hard time keeping up with the cost of living. And so to put it in, in simple terms, my goal in Congress is to make it easier for families in Rhode Island to achieve economic mobility, to build a better life for their kids than they had for themselves, uh, and to restore those pathways to the American dream uh, that, uh, that we've lost. There are a lot of issues you'd be able to tackle if elected and uh, serving in Congress. One issue that I've been asking every CD2 candidate is about the national debt. Currently, it's at about $30 trillion, and there are a plethora of ways to uh, address it. And this is one I, I really want to ask you about because you have experiences in finances being the state's treasurer. Um, how would you tackle that issue if elected of the national debt? Well, I, I will say uh, over the last year, the, the deficit which fuels the national debt has actually decreased by a huge amount. So we are trending in the right direction. Um, you know, ultimately, the answer uh, for the national debt is the same as the answer for you know, restoring pathways to the American dream, which is growing the economy. You know, a stronger economy with more good jobs, more economic activity, more productivity, uh, that will help close the debt over time by, uh, by uh, improving revenues and, and decreasing uh, costs uh, to the federal government. So, you know, my focus again is on igniting uh, an economy in, in this country where there's opportunity for everyone, where there's a good job for everyone who's willing to work hard for one. And if we can do that, then uh, that will uh, help solve the national debt and other challenges that, that our country faces. Moving on to another topic that I also like to ask every CD2 candidate is uh, about term limits for members of Congress. This is an idea that uh, is probably more relevant now since the current congressman has served for over 20 years. And most likely a lot of the candidates running in this election probably wouldn't be running if he was seeking another term. Where do you stand on the idea of uh, term limits for members of Congress? Yeah, you know, I, I do support term limits uh, for all elected positions, in, including for members of Congress. Um, you know, this is, uh, and I didn't always feel this way, by the way, but, you know, once I was elected to office as state treasurer, uh, I realized uh, that it's important uh, to make room for new voices. And I think it's a healthy thing for a democracy uh, to have term limits. Uh, the way I would do it is, is the way that we do it in Rhode Island for general officers, which is a limit on consecutive terms. You know, if somebody serves for a period of time in Congress, they should then go do something else, uh, make room for somebody else. And if they want to come, if the original person wants to come back later and, and run again, then that's fine. But I think 
uh, there should be a limit on the number of consecutive terms that, uh, that a member of Congress serves. Do you have a specific like number in mind for how many consecutive terms you'd like to see a limit for? No, I don't. I mean, I think I, I think eight to ten years is probably uh, is probably a good number. But um, you know, I look forward to getting to Washington and and uh, working with my colleagues down there to enact uh, clean government reforms, not only term limits but campaign finance reform to reduce the role of money in politics and um, uh, making sure that members of Congress are not able to trade or own individual stocks. Uh, I think that it's important. Uh, that we restore our democracy through real clean government reforms. And, uh, and I think term limits would be one of them. Looking at uh, some of the other hot button issues facing uh, members of Congress right now, immigration is a, is a big topic right now um, amongst the members of Congress. Uh, what bills would you support or even could bring up for that matter that would help address the um, influx of uh, illegal immigration in the country? Yeah, so I think what we need is an immigration system that is uh, fair and orderly and safe. Uh, you know, we want legal immigration uh, in this country. That's uh, what our country was built on, and it's what allowed families like mine uh, to, to come and uh, have access to the American dream. Uh, but uh, what's happening at the border now is not good for anyone. And so uh, I do think that the Biden administration needs to step up and come up with a real plan uh, for how to handle what's happening at the border. But you know, the principles that we should operate under are we need a system that is uh, fair and orderly and safe. One uh, specific decision that the Biden administration uh, made recently that's getting some pushback from some uh, congressional Democrats is the push to end Title 42. It's a, a public health policy that was put in place during COVID. And um, right now, President Biden wants to, to get rid of it. Do you support the, uh, do you uh, agree with President Biden on, on that issue? Well, Title 42 was always meant to be a temporary pandemic related measure. Uh, but that being said, uh, I think before it's, uh, uh, repealed, uh, the Biden administration does need to come up with a plan for what they are going to do instead. Um, and not having a plan is uh, is not an acceptable option. Do you believe it's uh, st there's uh, it's still too early to repeal it since there's no plan being brought up right now by the Biden administration? Uh, I think they should work as quickly as possible to come up with a, a comprehensive plan for how they're going to handle the situation at the border. These next few are uh, shorter form lightning round questions, you know, one to two word answers that I've asked every uh, CD2 candidate. Some of these issues you might actually would have to focus on if elected. Are you for or against statehood for Washington, DC and Puerto Rico? Uh, if the Americans living in those places choose statehood, then they should uh, be able to have it, yes. Would you vote in favor of or against legislation to add more Supreme Court justices? You know, I'm a little skeptical, and, and this one's going to require more than a one-word answer, so, so bear with me. I, um, I, I'm very disturbed by the fact that the, the Trump administration appointed three uh, very politically slanted uh, justices to the Supreme Court, which appears to be leading to the end of Roe v. Wade protections for women in this country and could open the door to all kinds of other uh, rollbacks of freedoms uh, that are important to Americans. So I'm very disturbed about what's happening with the court, and I think we need to look at reform. I'm not convinced at this point that adding more justices is the answer. If, if Democrats add a few more justices when we're in power, then there's nothing to stop the Republicans to come in and adding more, and uh, it's hard for me to see what the end game is there. Uh, that being said, uh, I do think that uh, we need to keep an open mind uh, and keep all options under consideration. Ultimately, though, what I would say to those of us who are disturbed by the direction that the court is taking, the number one thing that we can and must do to prevent uh, courts in this country from going into a radical conservative direction is for Democrats to win elections. Uh, my focus is on making sure that Democrats, including here in District 2, win elections uh, so that um, uh, the type of hardcore far-right ideological uh, judges that we see uh, Trump uh, having appointed uh, are not able to, uh, uh, to make it through the process in the future. If elected and a bill to ban members of Congress from trading stocks doesn't pass by the time you're sworn in, can you assure that you won't trade stocks or use any loopholes? Yes, absolutely. And this one would be actually one of the first votes you'd vote you would have to cast if elected. Who would you vote for for either Speaker or House Minority Leader if um, elected? 
Well, we'll see who runs. I, I think that Nancy Pelosi deserves tremendous credit uh, for passing the Affordable Care Act, for passing the bipartisan infrastructure bill, for uh, standing up to the extremism of Donald Trump. Uh, if she did run uh, again, she would have my support. Uh, if she doesn't run, then uh, we'll, we'll see who the candidates are. Uh, one quick question I want to ask before my uh, final non-political topic uh, pertains to uh, your campaign's tactic versus your uh, expected opponent in the general election, former Cranston Mayor Alan Fung. There's a lot of usage of the uh, photo with the uh, Fung and the Trump hat from 2017 and attempts to brand him as an extreme Republican. Um, Donald Trump isn't president anymore, and the issues such as inflation and rising gas prices weren't happening four years ago. So how exactly is the Fung Trump hat photo from 2017 relevant in 2022? Well, I think that voters need to understand the stakes of this election in CD2. I am running on an economic platform to lower the cost of healthcare and prescription drugs, lower the cost of energy, transition to a clean energy economy, bring manufacturing jobs back to Rhode Island. Uh, and uh, the worst thing for working people in Rhode Island would be a return to the division and chaos of the Trump era. And all of us who are running, uh, you know, our records uh, are on the ballot. And Again, my record has been delivering results on the economy, on issues like repairing schools and building out clean energy. Uh, Mayor Fung's record is out of step with where most Rhode Islanders are. Not only his support of Donald Trump, who was a very divisive president, but uh, positions that he took like opposing the Affordable Care Act, which has helped 75,000 Rhode Islanders get access to health care. Mayor Fung was against that. He was against raising the minimum wage from seven to eight dollars and then eight to ten ten. He was against uh, red flag laws that keep guns out of the hands of domestic abusers. So I do think that contrasts matter in elections, and it's important that people understand the differences uh, between uh, myself and the Republican candidate. My final question is a non-political topic I like to ask everyone on the show to keep tradition, and that is, in your opinion, what do you think Rhode Island is best known for? Well, I think that Rhode Island, uh, to people from out of state, we are best known uh, for our beaches, for our natural environment. Uh, that's why it's so important that we elect people who are pro-environment. Uh, one of the things that I'm most proud of in my record is the work I've done to build out clean energy uh, development all across the state and supporting green bonds to help clean up parks and beaches and preserve green spaces. Uh, I'm going to continue to prioritize protecting our natural environment in Congress uh, because that is one of the things that draws people to Rhode Island and, and rightfully so. That's an interesting choice for an answer. I haven't heard that one that often on the show. And it is true. We do have a beautiful environment and uh, every, everything is so close by. I mean, nothing is more than 30 minutes away. Uh, Treasurer Magazine, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show. It's been an absolute pleasure of mine to have you on. Thank you very much for having me. It's great to be here. And thank you for watching this episode of Reality TV. If you want to see future episodes as soon as they're posted on this channel, please click the subscribe button down below and the post notification bell icon to the right of it. I'm Raymond Bakari, and I'll see you on the next episode.